Hello, <clears throat> welcome back to Sutter White Live. I'm Blake Linton, along with Josh Thomas, here from the Mothership in Longview, Texas. That's right. So this week we're going to be going over uh, what it takes to finish out a log home, uh, what it costs, uh, what you're going to be involved in. And what to expect. And what to expect. Perfect. All right, we'll get us started, Josh. Well, if you've, you know, depending on where you're at in the, in the information gathering process, our plan today is to walk you through and show you exactly what you need to know in this video to give you the information you need to, to make uh, inf uh, informed decisions on the finish out. Right, educa that? Educated decision. There you go, Anyone. informed, I like my word better, right. but whatever. Regardless of what people say, turnkey log homes, or turnkey log home companies are the exception to the rule. Uh, rarely ever are you gonna find a log home company that's gonna offer you a turnkey option. Yeah, there, you're gonna see that more in uh, specific uh, builders, right? You know. Small local builders, right, right. That that just concentrate on Specialize a small in their area, on a small area. That's true. So, um, at Satterwhite, we offer a constructed shell. Uh, so, what we're going to do, we're going to take you to this, what we call the dried in phase. That's right. And uh, we're going to go over the things that you do after that, after the shell's dried in. So, that's right. So, so you know, you've worked with us. You know, you've designed your log home. You've, you've found a piece of land. These are the preliminary type things. Um, you know, we've contracted, we've come out, uh, helped you with your foundation or you've done your foundation and we've built a constructed shell for you, dried it in, like Blake said. Right. So that's, that's where we leave it uh, if we're doing you a constructed shell. So now let's jump right off into uh, what it's going to take from there to finish it out. All right, let's do it. So this is a really good uh, representation of what the shell is going to look like from the exterior when we walk away or when we hand it back over to you. Uh, so you'll see that the log walls are stacked, your roof system's built, uh, it's covered, the roof is covered with plywood, synthetic felt, felt paper. This is 30 pound felt, it's a little bit older pick, but um, now we use synthetic felt paper. Uh, porches are built, windows are in, exterior doors are done. There's a few things that aren't done. The final roof is not installed. The logs aren't stained and sealed. The fireplace isn't done at all. It'll just be a rough opening. We'll get to that. Uh, and lastly, uh, there's no gable glass. So we'll hit all of these things. Josh, let's show them what's on the inside. Here's the interior. As you can see, all your skeleton framing will be in place. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is finish it from here. You're gonna wanna put either sheetrock or wood on your ceilings and interior partition walls, but of course that's all done after you do your electrical. Satterwhite, what we're going to do is we're going to rough in the electrical. We'll go, yeah. You want me to do it? You want to do it? Well, we're going to walk through all of these things. <laughs> so, okay. So this is just a good, just a baseline picture to get you a mental image on what the shell is going to look like on the inside. So we'll, we'll start rolling through that. All right, let's go. Blake's doing it live, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you can see here, this is a gable end. We're not able to install the gable glass. You see the two triangular pieces here. Uh, I window just almost used the laser pointer. <laughs> they wouldn't have got anything out of that. Window companies do not make triangular pieces of glass standard. So what we do is we frame the openings and you would get a local glass company to come out, measure the glass, and then install the final glass pieces for you. As you can see, the uh, fireplace is not installed. There is a, uh, a hole cut for the fireplace and after we leave, your stone mason will come in, frame in the fireplace, and we're gonna provide the hole in the roof and the hole in the log wall for you. That's so. right, and one thing I'd like to just add quickly to that is, you know, uh, if you know what type of fireplace insert, uh, if you know, you know, what type of stone or anything, anything that you can tell us while we're doing the shell, that'll help us make sure that we've got the rough opening right. Uh, same thing with the, uh, with the chimney hole as well. Here's just kind of an aerial shot of a finished shell. It's got the synthetic felt on it. I don't know, probably five or six years ago, not, I think we, is when we moved on from 30 pound felt to a product called Sinfelt. Uh, with 30 pound felt, typically you need to get your shingles on within about two to three weeks. With this new product that's called Sinfelt, uh, you have about 60 to 90 days actually in the weather before you need to get your shingles installed. Yeah, and, and you and I both know with that 30 pound felt, two to three weeks is in perfect weather. You yeah, know, you get you get hot sun, blowing wind, rain. That thirty pound pelt, uh, thirty pound pelt, thirty pound pelt. 
30 pound felt will uh, deteriorate a lot faster than that. So this stuff is a heck of a lot better. Josh, I think with every week that goes by, we get better and better. <laughs> okay, so this is a picture of a crew stacking a log wall. Doing uh, rough and electrical. Doing rough and electrical. This is, we will mount, we will cut holes for all your exterior uh, light switches and receptacles in the exterior log wall. Based on the final plan. Right, yep. based on the final plan, which you really want to take into account where you want everything, we'll put, we'll run uh, chases, chases for HDMI, HDMI, cable, RG6, whatever you want RAM. We'll do all that as long as we know where it needs to be in the log wall. So as you can see here, this guy's cutting a hole for an outlet and we'll route the wire to that outlet to the closest switch box and then into your attic where you can tie it all together. Yeah, and, and, and I just add to that, because I always like to add to what you say, yeah. <laughs> is, uh, you know, we can do anything um, within reason, uh, roughing this stuff in, if we know that it needs to be done. So yeah, we're going over what it takes to finish out your log home today, but a lot of this stuff that we're gonna talk about, it actually is thing, notes to be making for design process as well. Right, things that you need to take into account before, uh, before the house is even built. So as you can see in this picture, you can see those, those loops of wire hanging down from the top of the log wall. Uh, that's kind of where we leave it and your electrician can, can junction box all that stuff together in the attic once we're done. Uh, finished uh, electrical, uh, or just, just a finished house, you know, just kind of showing, you know, the, the, step that, the steps that's gonna be uh, required to take it from the rough and electrical in the log wall and the rough and electrical in the, in the walls and ceilings on the interior to get you, you know, finished fixtures in a, in a living room area here. Right, plumbing. If you're building in an area that we're, we're, where Satter White is pouring the slab, uh, we will provide the roughed-in plumbing for you. Um, depending on the state. Yeah, depending on the state. We are not licensed to do plumbing in Arkansas or Louisiana, uh, but this is a picture of the roughed-in plumbing coming out of the slab. Yeah, and, and don't let any of that discourage you or worry you about, you know, who's doing the plumbing. Even if we're not doing the plumbing, if we're, if we're you know, involved in the process, We'll coordinate with your plumber, you know, just give us the pertinent information so we'll make all that happen. But, I mean, as you can see here, uh, rough and plumbing is just like any conventional house if it's on a slab like this. Uh, we're doing your drain lines are set, uh, your uh, vent pipes are set. Uh, typically, our standard is we do a single Durapex line in to the house, uh, which is a flexible, uh, uh, you know, covered line coming in to supply. Uh, and then from there, it typically splits off into pecs. This is all of our standard these days. Now, keep in mind, everything we do is, is custom, so we can do anything that you want us to do, but these are just standard practices for us. Yeah. And again, these, this picture that you're seeing right here, this is not work that Satterwhite will do. We'll rough in the plumbing through the slab, but this is a picture yeah, of... So um, we're gonna leave it like this, Right. and, and then your plumber will take your over. Your plumber will take it from there. And as you can see, uh, pex tubing is by far the, I'm not sure if there's anybody using copper anymore. Not much. Um, so PEX tubing is pretty much the gold standard now. And that's ran through all your interior walls and your attic, uh, which greatly reduces the chances of it getting damaged or freeze. Here's kind of a finished photo of, of a plumbing, of, of some plumbing, of a, of a bathroom in a, in a shell. So as you can see. This is your getaway chateau in the that's right. Swiss Alps, isn't it? Uh -huh. I thought so. Yep. Uh, a, uh, HVAC or uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning. So this is part. This will be part of the finish out. You know, we've we've roughed in the house. You saw the picture at the beginning um, of how we're going to leave it, step away. So from from that point, the the HVAC guy, our air conditioning guy, is going to come in. He's going to set your inside unit, your air handler. He's going to set your outside unit, your condensing unit. Uh, he's going to do your your plenum up uh, out of the air handler. He's going to do all of your trunks around. Um, so you see this is, this is um, you know, vent work coming up into a, uh, over a scissor truss. Uh, so that's a little bit more technical, but we can help you through all this. So basically, you can still have a, a HVAC yeah. and a vented. I don't want to interrupt you, but I want to do say one thing that I feel is Go important. Go ahead, I do it to you all the time. That I feel is important in talking about HVAC. As you're well aware, you can customize any of our, any of our floor plans any way you want, but once you get that floor plan close to the finished product, we really recommend that you need, you need to take it to your HVAC guy and he needs to lay out how he's going to be doing 
um, the duct work and things like that. I mean, there are some situations where the duct work can be tricky depending on how the house is designed. So uh, if we need to make any sort of recommendations or changes to the plan, before we start building it is the time to do that. So that's very important that you take it to your HVAC guy. Or, or, your, or your builder. Or your builder, either yeah, way, yeah. either way. If, so. if you're working with the builder, he'll handle all these things. If you're trying to GC it yourself or having a more active role, then that's something that you can do. But just like Blake said, basically with any of the subcontractors, um, you know, we'll accommodate whatever we can to help them as long as we know up front that, that, that they have some special requirements. Here's just another picture of some ductwork being ran through an attic. <clears throat> um, this looks to be probably an attic frame truss. Uh, there's plenty of room back there behind that, that pony wall to run your ductwork. So um, just kind of showing you some pictures and of things that you do. So after your, let's talk about your HVAC is in and your electrical is in, and now you're ready for insulation. I'd say, what percentage do you, get, Josh, do you think do spray foam insulation? Over 90, easy. Over 90, yeah. That, yeah. It's definitely much more uh, economical in the long run. It right. is going to be more expensive on the front end, but I can vouch for it in my house. It's great. Well, and, and you know, one of the good things about a log house that, that sometimes people don't realize is, yes, you're going to pay more for, for spray foam insulation, but with the log house, you're only doing the roof system, gable ends and stuff. You don't have to do the first floor yeah. like you want on a conventional Yeah, the, lo the logs will insulate themselves, and you want to do spray foam insulation on the gable ends and on the roof, mm -hmm. but that cannot be done until all your electrical and HVAC is in place. So mm -hmm. insulation is the last step before you put your sheetrock or your wood on the walls and ceilings. So um, I think from what I've heard, the typical payout on a spray foam insulation is about four years, you'll make the money back. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Oh, for sure. I mean, for, for one, yeah, you've got the energy efficiency forever for the life of the house, but typically, and this is a question for your HVAC guy, um, your, your HVAC cost, or your HVAC unit can be smaller, which in turn can make it cheaper. Right, it would cut your tonnage down, that's right. correct. So, Okay, so after you've got your insulation done, now we're, it's on to wall and ceiling coverings. Of course, at Satterwhite, we, <clears throat> we can provide you with a multitude of uh, tongue and groove lumber. Yeah, um, rough sawn, tongue and groove, ship lap. Um, chink joint, all kinds of stuff, and that's just uh, you know that's just if you decide to go with lumber on there. So uh, you can also do uh, you know this picture's got some some drywall, some sheetrock in there. Right, you know drywall is a good way to lighten things up a little bit. Um, most of the time, people, if you have a dramatic vault in your great room, you'll cover that with a, a pretty finished mm -hmm. lumber. Right, and then you might want to do a few interior walls with sheetrock, whatever you prefer. Uh, this is a pretty... Yeah, there's no right or wrong answer to, no. to, to picking what your finishes are in your walls and interior, uh, or your ceilings and interior walls. But one thing that Blake said about the insulation and also kind of goes into this is, you know, 99.9% .9 of customers are not covering the log wall. You know, that's, that's one of the benefits of having a log house <clears> is not only is it solid, not only does it give it natural insulation, but as you stack the logs, your interior wall or the interior side of your exterior wall, that's a finished wall. So there's no additional cost in, in finishing that out. That's correct. So, all right, after you put your, your sheetrock or your wood up, <clears throat> we offer a ton of different interior beams. These are, this is spruce round stock, but we also have square stock in cedar, spruce, Douglas fir, native cedar. There's some very pretty spruce tree stock beams or trusses. Um, we could go on forever showing you thousands of pictures, but it just comes down to what you prefer. Yeah, and you know, the thing about us also is, um, you know, you saw the previous pictures of the shell, but you know, we get this question a lot, I know I do, you know, none of these decorative style slides that we're showing here, none, none of these beams are typically required. You know, this is all decorative. So whatever style you like, whatever uh, quantity, uh, you know, uh, spacing on there that you like, it's all, it's all just decorative. So you can, you can uh, put as much or as little, as wild or as mild as you want. Right, that's exactly right. So, all right, so you got your wood in and now it's time for cabinets and countertops. Uh, this is something that you would typically, if you're using a builder, you would coordinate this with your builder, pick out your counters, counter, your countertops, cabinets, things of that nature. Yeah, because you can see from this picture here, you know, this is about how we leave a kitchen. So there's a lot to be desired in that as part of the finish out. I mean, you know, honestly, one of the main things or, you know, the kitchen is basically all finish out. So right. um, just a picture to show, you know, this is where we, we're starting at. 
uh, you know, just like Blake said, you know, either custom cabinets or prefab cabinets to fit the space, uh, countertops, cabinet pulls. Right. And, and all of this stuff that we're talking about are exactly the things that is going to dictate your budget or how much you're going to spend. Uh, you know, if you want to keep the budget lower, you know, this is your opportunity to save some money. You don't have to put custom walnut cabinets in, in your home. You, right. can, you can use a, a prefab more, units, prefab right. units, more economical, and that's mm -hmm. a great way to save money. So mm -hmm. um, even though we're showing you this kind of high-end stuff here, you can do about whatever you want. Yeah, same thing with flooring. You know, that's a huge question. You know, we always get asked, what, is the, what does the turnkey house cost? Well, there's so many options. You know, it's really hard for us to just spit it out there because, you know, just like this slide shows, there's, there's how many, the, uh, there's five times as many options of this for flooring, you know? Right. Um, so here's a pic of a, uh, this is an upstairs area uh, on one of our houses. So uh, it shows you uh, what the subfloor is going to be like when we walk away. So it's a, a tongue and groove plywood subfloor in the construction phase. So obviously this is going to be covered with some other type of finished flooring. Uh, it could be tile. This is a, you know, obviously a tile floor. Um, do some neat wood floors that you can purchase from us or obviously a ton of other uh, avenues you can get that from. Stained concrete is really popular. This one's been scored with a nice design on the entryway. Um, All right, stairs and railing. This is, an, the picture you're looking at here is an example of how we leave a standard stairway. Uh, you know, this has a frame storage underneath it. Uh, we can also offer log tread stairs like you see here. Uh, log tread stairs are a little bit of an upgrade but really add some pop uh, to the floor plan. Um, we, can, we can go through some different prices and stuff with you on that. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the trim. Just, just jump right into that, just parlay yeah, right into that trim. So, that's right. Yeah, uh, talking about options, uh, you know, interior trim out. We're going to do all of the exterior trim out as part of our shell phase. But to finish out your log home, the whole premise of, the, of this show is uh, interior stuff, stuff that you're going to be responsible for. So um, you're going to need to trim your interior doors, the inside of your exterior doors, the inside of your windows, base uh, molding if you want that, casing or some sort of uh, uh, ceiling trim there. Um, this is... Uh, that's, an, that's an, a really interesting way to, to trim out some gable end windows. Uh, th this customer has used spruce tree stock, uh, and those are half slabs is what that is. You go ahead and you mount your windows in there, mount your gable glass, and then come in there and, and uh, just put the tree stock slabs on top yeah, of it. Yeah, so this wall, this particular gable right here doesn't have any uh, logs, any, any house logs holding this up. That's all framed uh, encased in, in, uh, in tree stock. Right. They're just um, kind of showing some trim there. That's probably a one by four spruce or pine trimming that door. Um, once you get your trim done, it's time for the appliances. You like the way when you're talking about a slide, yeah. I just roll to the yeah, next. Yeah, it's kind of surprised me with that. <laughs> hey, like that. you don't know what's coming next. Here it is. Um, no, but appliances, you know, the, obviously this is part of the, a big part of the finish out. Um, you know, there's a ton of options here uh, from, from what most folks uh, would consider, you know, standard uh, uh, residential style appliances of course you can you know go go crazy as far as budget goes with right. with a uh, semi-commercial uh, you know Viking right. Thermador decor right. um, options there as well uh, interior doors uh, so you know you're if like I said you know we talk uh, finishing out the log house we're not providing any interior doors so um, you got a lot of options there solid wood uh, raised panel, flat panel, but just a bunch of different uh, uh, options there. Masonite, uh, depending on what level of, uh, of contemporariness that you like in there. Finish hardware. Finish hardware is another great way to add a personal touch to something. You know, uh, nine times out of ten, when you buy interior doors, they're not going to have the finished hardware. There's a thousand different options you could use uh, <clears throat> when it comes to door hardware bathroom hardware, things like that, kitchens. Yeah, take a walk down the hardware aisle in Lowe's or Home right. Depot or your local uh, hardware store. And those things go from five cents to $500. So. Yeah, you ought to see the ones in Blake's house. Yeah, <laughs> you're so full of it. Uh, all right, so now interior stain and ceiling. Uh, yeah, so, you know, obviously, you know, all of your lumber, all of your sheet rocks, all of that stuff on the inside and exterior for that matter, um, 
is going to need to be is going to need to be stained and sealed or covered with something if it's if it's sheetrock, uh, tape bed texture painted, so those types of things. So so think about that. Outside storage room and garage doors. Did you have something you wanted to ask? No, I'm fine. I'm it's sorry, good. I'm rolling through these slides. <laughs> um, outside storage room and garage doors, as you can see here, we will frame the opening and trim them on the exterior. And you'll just need to get yourself or your builder to come in and go ahead and install those garage doors. And again, there's a ton of different options. Yeah, from mild to wild. Yep. All, all budgets uh, uh, covered there. Here's something that, that not everybody thinks about. That's the truth. <laughs> or, or, or even has money to by the, has money for by the time they get there. But, uh, you know, just, just think about keep in mind final grading, uh, sprinkler systems, landscaping driveways, the, you know, those types of things. Um, you know, how are you going to leave that new house that you've built on the outside, you know, curb appeal type stuff? And a lot of people don't think about that when they're doing their budgeting. Right, right. So I can promise you it does cost money to do landscaping and you know a lot of people they love to get outside and do this and do it themselves you know mm -hmm. uh, I'm not much in, into that kind of stuff but uh you know it's it's to each his own uh, well, but it's definitely a consideration that needs to be addressed absolutely and yeah. something that you need to build into your budget that's right at the very least some sort of a basic driveway at the very least well, a basic driveway and also you want to make sure that your that final grading is giving you positive drainage channeling all water away from the house during a nothing a more run. important than that that's true you do not you want the water to be channeled away from the house at all times during the heaviest of rains so the rule of thumb actually is 10 from your house move 10 foot out and you want at least six inches of at fall. least six inches of fall yep yeah so think about this you guys um, just just help this is kind of planning stuff but just kind of uh, things to think about what's the most important room in your house to you you know, to Blake and I, it's going to be the kitchen because we right. like to eat. That's, I was uh -huh. going to say, it's the kitchen. <laughs> um, you know, some people, it's the master suite. Some people, you know, they've, they've been in a house for 20 years and they have a terrible master bath, you know. Right. Um, just just uh, what's most important to you, plan around that, budget around that. Um, along budgeting lines, make smart decisions, not necessarily cheap ones. Just right. do your research, you know, consumer reports uh, on, uh, um, you know, appliances, stuff like that. Uh, just because you know you can get a cheap water heater now doesn't necessarily mean that's the one to get if it's going to go out in a year or two. Right, right. You know, and do some preliminary planning. Uh, it says you know lay out furniture on a floor plan. Uh, either one of our draftsmen can give you uh, furniture templates that you can put on that floor plan. Same scale as the plan. Same scale as a plan. Right. Just kind of lay it out before we start building, just to make sure everything's going to work and see if you need to make some changes. So um, I know that was kind of a quick deal. Um, yeah, that's. That you know, kind crazy. of crash course, but, uh, you know, there's really, if you've never seen anything about us, never seen anything about log homes before, you know, basically just trying to get your feet wet, hopefully this helped you out some. Uh, if you have any questions beyond that, you can ho holler at uh, any of us here at the office, Blake or I especially, but anybody here, anybody at, at the Georgia office, at the Utah office, right. um, you know, we're happy to help. Just give us a call, and we want to thank you for being here again this week. Again, if you want us to, if you have any ideas for topics that you want covered, uh, just drop a comment <clears throat> down there on the in the comment section. Yeah, and, give us and, a call. and I just want to say, uh, let's everybody say a prayer for for Rocky Hunt, uh, the little girl uh, from Utah who's who's part of the Satterwhite family. Absolutely, um, we're she's doing great. Yep, she's doing great. We're definitely keeping her in our prayers. So praying for you every day, Rocky. Hope you get to see this. Everybody have a good day, and thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next Thursday.